Hey, Jeremiah. Hey, Ben, what's up? God, you are so hunchy. Hunchy? Is, is that even a word? Hunchy is totally a word. Uh, are you sure about that? Have you noticed that there's a lot of hunchiness lately? Hunchiness? That's what you're going with? Hunchathon? <laughs> Hunchtagen? You know, kind of like contagion? Hunchtagen? Yeah, I, I have noticed a lot of people are more slouched forward than I. It seems to be, regardless of fitness level, regardless of age, people are rounded forward. I'm Dr. Ben Quist. And I'm fitness expert Jeremiah Kruger. And we're here today to talk to you about this massive hunchathon, in addition to teach you a really quick five move flow to fix it. Over the years of being a personal trainer and a physical therapist, I have found most people have expressed concern about being too hunchy, especially as they're aging. They're worried about that they're hunched now and they're going to continue to get more and more hunchy. And actually, even in a lot of the younger people I train, I'm finding that posture is really becoming a big concern. So I think let's start off today by defining what we really mean when we say somebody is hunchy and then discussing how they can fix it. Okay, so now what does it mean to have good posture? I always like to teach this with a concept I call stacking your dots. So Jeremiah is going to be my victim here. Um, typically we use this using a plumb line, which is just a straight line coming down from the ceiling so we can kind of see where someone's posture is. So in looking at Jeremiah, let's see if he's able to stack his dots. And there's three main areas we're going to look at with this is where is the tip, bottom tip of his ear in relation to the center of his shoulder in relation to the center of his hip. Okay. So when we look at this right now and we're kind of lined up at the shoulder, you can see that Jeremiah's tip of his ear is slightly forward. So his head's a little bit forward of his shoulders. And you can also see that his hips are a little bit forward of the line as well. So if we were going to stack Jeremiah's dots, I'm going to have him shift his hips back slightly. Good. And then pull your head back slightly. Tip your chin down slightly. There we go. Good. So now you can see he's nicely lined up between the ear to the shoulder to the hip. Some people find that they can't even get into this position. And that just means that there's areas of tightness that have to be addressed first. Jeremiah uh, has pretty good posture to start and he's able to get into pretty much perfect posture with, with a little bit of coaching. Oh, hey, Mike. Oh my gosh, guys, we've got a special guest. This is the only human being I know who has m stronger, better muscles on the back of his body than the front. Jeremiah, get out of here. Mike, Mike, come on over. Let's show, show him what you got. So when Mike lines up to the line, look, I've got, look at that posture, folks. This is amazing. Uh, looking at his ear, his shoulder, I don't even have to coach him. He is basically in a straight line, completely stacked with his dots without even trying. Very nice. So why do people even get hunchy? That's a great question, and there's a couple main reasons that happens. The first main reason is a concept called tissue creep. And that basically states that whatever postures you're in on a repetitive, long-term basis, like most Americans are driving their cars, they're on their iPads, they're playing video games, they're watching TV, everything they're doing is very flexed forward, the tissue will naturally adapt where the muscles that are being stretched lengthen and the muscles that are being shortened adaptively shorten, causing hunchiness. So the second reason that people get hunchy revolves around the muscles that they focus on in the gym. What muscle does everybody focus on in the gym? Monday's chest day, pecs. Mon Monday's chest day. Everyone's focused on pecs and biceps, you know, all the muscles in the front of the body. So training the muscles in the front side of your body more than the muscles in the back side of your body would then be a very big contributor to why we have slumped posture. Yep, and we've all seen those, those guys and gals that are walking around all, all hunched over because their muscles are so overdeveloped on the front. I mean, you almost never hear anybody say, nice middle trapezius. Speak for yourself. Wow, Jeremiah, nice mid trapezius. Okay, so to get you guys a little bit better kind of concept of what's going on when people are hunching over, the area of the spine that that occurs in is what's called your thoracic spine. And there's 12 bones that comprise that area. And that area naturally has a little bit of a curve that way. And when we're getting over hunchy, that curve starts to get exaggerated, also pushing the head forward into a forward head position. So when we look at things to get this area back into good posture, we're going to be looking at loosening up that thoracic spine area. Jeremiah, where did you come from? You don't want to know. <laughs> um, so anyways, we were talking out there about muscles being overdeveloped in the front of the body. Uh, I read a, read a great book a long time ago talking about the concept of muscles being like springs. When we're looking at that overdeveloped musculature in the front and we use that concept of thinking of these, these muscles as two sets of springs on either side of the shoulder joint, when that pec is tight, it's going to pull forward 
On the opposite side of the body, if you've got a nicely developed mid trapezius, rhomboids, and rear delt, that muscle is going to act as a spring pulling that shoulder backward. And what we want is we want to have balance across that joint. So this is all great information, but what do we do about it? Well, what you should do about it is do these five great moves we have for you, incorporate them into your weekly routine, which is going to keep you standing tall and strong your whole life. All right, the first move in our five move flow is going to be just a nice extension stretch over a theraball. So what you're going to do is set yourself up on the ball, shoulder blades on the ball, lay your head backwards. You want a little bit of extension. The head should still be touching the ball. You want to use some light weights. You want to use threes or even ones for this, but extend your arms out, straighten the elbows fully, and then allow the arms to fall backwards, extending your body over the ball. This move you're going to hold for about two minutes. The second move in our flow is a move to loosen up that thoracic spine. We talked about the fact that that gets really tight. It's important to loosen that up. You can do this one with a golf club, PVC pipe, or mobility stick, whatever you want. You're going to pop it behind your body. Hands are going to go up on the sides of the stick. Bend your knees slightly, hinge forward at your hip, and then rotate. What you want to do is get the inside of your hand on the inside of your thigh. You're going to feel an intense stretch in your pecs and then look up towards the ceiling, holding for about five seconds. You're also going to feel this through your spine, and then you're going to rotate back the other direction. Repeat five times on each side. Third move in our flow is going to be a mid-back foam roll mobilization. What you're going to do is take your foam roll, place it at the bottom tip of your shoulder blades, and then you're going to press your hips up, hands come behind to support your head, and then you're going to slowly roll down through your spine all the way to the top of your shoulder blades, and then you're going to slowly roll back the other direction. You're going to do this five times. Once you've completed the five rolls, you're going to come back down to the bottom position where the, the uh, foam roll is at the bottom base tips of those shoulder blades. Then you're going to extend your body backwards. Take one deep breath, blow it out. Then walk your feet forward, moving the roll up your body about an inch, extend backward. Take one deep breath, come on up, and work your way all the way up your spine to the top of those shoulder blades uh, with this movement to increase that extension in that thoracic spine. So the next one is going to be a strengthener. We've talked about in previous videos, if you start to gain mobility or range of motion in the joint, it's very important to strengthen back through that range of motion. So what we're going to be doing is laying on your stomach, taking your arms down. You're going to press your shoulder blades down into depression. Then you're going to pull them up off the mat, extending slightly off the mat. Do not take your feet off the floor. Then lift your hands up and squeeze into those shoulder blades, holding for five seconds. And then bring it down, completing that for 10 reps. All right, the final move in the flow is a prone press up. What you're going to do is place your hands right roughly about chest height, point your toes towards the back wall. And then you're going to press up off the ground, extending up through the spine, looking up towards the ceiling, holding for a few seconds, coming back down nice and smooth, pressing back up again, holding for five seconds, coming back down, and repeating that for five reps. So a couple closing points to summarize. When you're working out, try to prioritize the back side of your body. Personally, I do my pull days at the beginning of the week and my pull exercises at the beginning of the workout so I can emphasize the back side of my body. In your normal daily life, make sure you're stacking your dots when you're standing. And finally, try to incorporate into your life somehow the five exercises that we demonstrated just a moment ago. No more hunchy. No more hunchy. We, so we'll make it seem like we're walking in. Okay. Just okay. fake it so you can... Okay, sure. Going in first. Oh shit, okay, sorry. I'll try again. Yeah. Yes, I am. I'll do that. I'll walk, I'll walk in real quick. So, did, I, did you get hit by the door? No. Okay, one more try. I don't know how fast it calls it, but I thought I heard a pump. All right, last one. So, why do people even get hunchy? That's, that's, that's a good question. <laughs> try it again. <laughs> what is my response to that? Uh, there's a couple. There's a couple reasons. There's yeah, a couple main reasons. You could say that's a good question. There's a couple reasons. So why do people even get hunchy? That's a great question, and there's a couple main reasons that happens. All right, let's try that. 